This is Twit. And speaking of small antennas or not having a lot of room for antennas, we've got our friend Vito, VA3VMD, with us here tonight. Hi, Vito. Hi, uh, how you doing? Uh, uh, pleased to meet you, and I'm honored to uh, to be joined by uh, by uh, a great, talented crew over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. You ran into Bob uh, recently, and that's how, well, I guess you made the contact there, and uh, we found out what you're doing antenna-wise. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about it? Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, I got into this hobby and I got my license uh, May 2016 and I, I was puttering around with what to do with antennas and, you know, there's so much out there. You can spend so much money out there. Um, uh, you can go crazy. You can go from the minimal, you can go to the max and you can go nuts. But I wanted to be able to learn in the hobby. So uh, I decided to throw up a little piece of wire. Uh, 20 meters up on my side yard fence and I kid you not it's probably I say it's uh, 10 feet or 12 feet off the ground but it's really more like uh, <laughs> it's probably eight feet and I threw that up and um, I'm telling you um, the thing gets out like gangbusters uh, to the point where I didn't even want to touch it anymore uh, so when that happened uh, I thought to myself well wow um, what else can I do so there's my for right now you're seeing my 80 meter dipole that's my 80 meter dipole and I've actually configured that in an L shape. So the one leg is an L shape. It goes to the pole at the back there. And then it shoots 90 degrees uh, to the other side of the fence. And I thought to myself, is this thing, you know, am I going to get anything out of this? Um, I, I wasn't sure whether I was going to do it. But before I did this, I actually had it sitting on the fence in that configuration. And believe it or not, I was talking to guys 300 miles away in, in uh, late afternoon to a couple of uh, guys in Syracuse. And as you know, I'm in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And so there you go. So there's the volleyball net. Uh, I call it the volleyball net there. <laughs> and, um, and this is the other leg. So the, the bottom leg is 80 meters. And the top uh, wire that you see there is actually a f 40 meters. Uh, so the 40 meter stretches along the back. And then the 80 meters is underneath it. And uh, underneath the clothesline there, I walk. And there's the uh, other... A leg going 90 degrees to the fence post there. Now that antenna, um, I can get, I can use without an antenna tuner. I get about a 1.5, 1.7 on the ends of the band, on both ends of 80 meters on sideband, and a flat match at 3800. And the same thing for 40 meters. I I have no more than a 1.7 match on uh, on the ends of. Uh, of those antennas, and uh, I use the antenna tuner to kind of, you know, tune it flat. Uh, but the less, in my opinion, the less your antenna tuner, antenna tuner can do, and the more resonant your antennas are, the more effective you're going to be. And again, I haven't been in this hobby for a long time. Um, that's just all she wrote. <laughs> yeah, it works for me. So, uh, tell me about um, the feed point. There, are you using two coaxes, or are they the Two elements tied yeah, common. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I, I ended up putting the 40-meter uh, dipole up first, and I ended up doing a Route 66 journey. So by the time I came back, it was late in the fall. And I was thinking of putting something, something up higher because I do have the space to go higher here if I really wanted to. But I wanted to get on 80 meters. So uh, what did I do? Um, I threw up the 80 meters. I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to take the chance of impacting the 40 meter dipole. So it is a separate feed point uh, with separate coax going into the into the shack. Yeah. Now, I noticed in the video it looked like maybe you had some ferrite beads on the coax there. Is that correct? Absolutely, absolutely. I found um, specifically with. Um, uh, with the with the uh, 40 meter um, band, uh, for some reason, you know, there was my like, computer speakers picking up a little bit of um, RF, but nothing in the signal. So what I did, I mean, I could have put a bale in on the end, but what I did is I, I, I put three ferrite chokes uh, just down from the feed point. And then if you noticed on the video, I went a little bit further down and actually coiled uh, some coax, I think about 10 turns of coax or so on each of those feed points uh, before coming into the house. And I also have a ferrite, I have ferrite chokes on every single cable I have in the shack just to play it on the safe side. And I've never had any issues with, uh, uh, with RF in the shack at all. So <laughs> I'm lucky. 
Well, what about neighbors? Do you think they know what it is or are you, you getting away with it okay? Well, um, let me put it this way. The neighbors have no problems with it, but uh, my uh, my friends on 80 meters down in, uh, in Massachusetts, uh, there's a couple of guys I get together on 80 meters at night. They've kind of... Uh, They've kind of classified me as the uh, clothesline kid. And some other ones said Vito has a, uh, does not have a step IR. He has a step ladder antenna. And <laughs> as you can see here, um, I can actually, um, I can actually uh, work on these antennas with a step ladder and, and no, no problem at all. And as a matter of fact, I've worked Valerie a couple of times when she's done her Facebook streams with all those, uh, uh, you know, with all those uh, uh, pileups that she has. I've, I've broken through those pileups, no problem, exactly on that 40-meter uh, antenna that you see above that wire there. Wow. So even though it's low, there's something to be said for resonance, huh? You know what? Uh, listen, I haven't been in this hobby a very long time, and I, I think one of the one of the greatest things you can do if you're getting into this hobby is um, learn. Um, what I did up there is not rocket sci science. Uh, it doesn't take much to do. Uh, but it just takes a bit of time and uh, a little bit of patience. As a matter of fact, my first antennas I even did without an analyzer. I used my 7300 because it's got a uh, SWR um, a plotting graph on it. So I'd come downstairs and I'd go tap, 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 tap and see what my SWR was. But then I kind of invested in one of these, which is an MFJ um, 207 analyzer, one of the older ones, uh, which I started using that just so I didn't have to go up and down in the house all the time. And I got myself a little frequency counter so I could see exactly, uh, you know, where the antenna was uh, resonant on frequency. And this is an example of the, um, you know, basically what I did. It's, uh, there's, the, there's the feed point. Uh, there's the feed point, And it's 12-gauge speaker wire, folks. It's nothing fancy. 12-gauge speaker wire. That's it. Wow. And you just tied the two together there. So it's... Uh yeah, what I did is I shorted. I shorted the um, each leg. The two wires uh, on 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 each separate leg are actually shorted together on 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 the ends. So they're effectively uh, acting as one one physical wire instead of two separate leads. Yeah. Okay. What I, I see your radio behind you there on the display. What kind of radio do you use? Um, I have. Uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to uh, to purchase um, an ICOM 7300. Um, I I've had it for almost uh, the full time that I've been a, an amateur operator. Um, I also run um, a um, Kenwood uh, 480 uh, uh, HX in the vehicle. Uh, I I don't really use it uh, that often, except when I do my long trips. As you can see behind me. Um, I have traveled Route 66. If you go to my QRZ page, you'll see, I think I did 17 states in 21 days, I think, uh, doing Route 66 and back. So I enjoyed using that when I'm, when I'm on the road and specifically for those trips. But at home, I'm sold on the 7300. I mean, it's just a, just a fabulous radio. Yeah, I have to agree with you. You know, I've, uh, I've had my hands on, matter of fact, I got my hands on one right now. I'm not going to be able to keep this one though. But uh, it's really a great radio. I've used these at field day and uh, various times. And, you know, and in the class it's in, I don't know anything else uh, really that competes with it at this time. Well, Vito, thanks for coming by tonight and telling us a little bit about your antennas there and how you can actually get good performance on a fairly easy to build antenna that doesn't take a lot of room. Absolutely. And on closing, uh, George, I want to thank you guys. I really appreciate for uh, you having us on and us Canadians up in Canada, by the way, I can speak for all of us here that our prayers are with uh, our, our neighbors uh, down south, both in Texas and in Florida and right across the board. And tell Bob next time he comes to Toronto that I've got a nice purple tie for him because I know he's a, he loves his purple. So <laughs> so I want to make sure, uh, uh, Bob, that tie is for you. So next time you come down here, we'll uh, we'll pass it on to you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Vito. And, uh, yeah, he may just make a special trip up there just to get the tie. <laughs> That's, awesome. That's great. Well, listen, thanks a lot, George. I really appreciate it. And uh, uh, God bless to all of you and take care.